Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and uh, I've been ignoring Orktober and uh, I've been focusing on Terraintober which is my new hashtag, hashtag Terraintober, that's what we're talking about. So uh, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So what does Terrain Tabor been bringing me? So basically what I've done is uh, I've gone through a whole bunch of old bits of terrain kits that I've had knocking around. Like these uh, uh, these wall sections that came out a number of uh, years ago now uh, as part of a terrain kit from Games Workshop that came with the quad guns and I think an Icarus last cannon as well. And I've got loads and loads of ammo crates and oil barrels that have been kicking around from the days of when I got the uh, the container set, the big terrain kit from Games Workshop, the terrain, uh, the, the containers. And they came with all these barrels and other bits and pieces. So uh, combined with some skill and some learning from our wonderful uh, Wargamer Unification Group fellow, Luke Fellows, uh, as in Luke's APS. I'll leave a link in the description below for his channel. Not that he needs much help, he's on 60,000 subscribers. So if you haven't heard of him before, then you should go and check him out. So what I've taken from his channel and a lot of his videos uh, is all about ground cover. And as you can see, what I've done is mount these uh, these wall sections that I'm using here on some 12 by 12 inch uh, MDF tile. I think it's six millimeters thick, this tile. And it enables me to use this on the, uh, the on the game mats that I use for my games. If you haven't seen any of my battle reports, go and have a look at those because I do like to make my boards modular and this, this kind of board section fits nicely on a game map. So taking the knowledge from his channel, uh, which is basically making undulation effect using a sculptor mould, which is basically plaster of Paris mixed with uh, really fine shredded paper uh, and that kind of activates when you add water to it, it kind of makes a, a mulchy kind of effect. You can sculpt that around and in about 30 minutes it goes hard. And that's what all that white stuff is. Um, I've then used um, builder sand, uh, which has been strained through a sieve to get the, uh, the larger pieces. So you apply that next, uh, then the fine grain sand. And then the magic compound really is um, tile grout powder mixed with real dirt. Now that is the key from Luke's APS, uh, the master of terrain building. Um, so when you apply the powder and dirt, which you bake first, you bake the dirt first, gets rid of all the nasty bugs and everything else in it uh, and cleans it up nicely. You mix that with tile grout and then when you apply that to your board, you then spray it with isopropyl alcohol and then a mix of PVA glue and water. And not only is it super lightweight, it sets like a rock because it's all its own adhesive. And you end up, once it's painted, with uh, what you're seeing on screen. So you can see all the, all the various stages as I've gone through this, and I'll, I'll list these, these stages out in the description below. But really the man to, uh, to lead you on this journey is Luke himself. Uh, he's really good at explaining it, and if I can do it, anybody can do it, right? I'm, I'm not the world's best at terrain. But what this has done is made me uh, realize that I can apply this to several different types of terrain board. And you can paint this Whatever colour you like, so if you want a Martian version, you're obviously going to paint the base red. But this, I think, has made a nice little handy little firebase, an Imperial style uh, resupply or firebase uh, for use in my games of 40k. You can probably even quite happily use it in Kill Team as well. I've got a few better pictures coming up that I've taken in my light box, so you can see it a bit more clearly uh, with the guns applied. Now, I've not glued the guns in for ease of storage and transport. Um, but you can even use the, there's an antenna comms array that fits on these little boxes quite nicely as well. And I've painted mine to a reasonable level of detail. If you see my battle reports and the comments below, people seem to really like the level of effort I put into my terrain for my battle reports. And I'm a big advocate of painting your terrain almost to the level that you paint your miniatures and spend that kind of time. The money that you invest in your terrain is almost as much as the money that you might invest in an army. So if you're going to spend all that time and effort on an army and you're going to play a game, you want to play it on a board that looks equally as stunning as the armies that you're using. So for me, spending a lot of time on terrain is very important. So that allowed me to move on to the Sector Imperialis kits. Now I haven't got a painting guide for these. I have basically used what's, uh, what's been done on Warhammer TV, taking it to a couple of extra stages, added a bit from, uh, from Duncan on Warhammer TV, especially the yellow or the uh, Yushabti bone scheme. 
and then taken some of the weathering effects that Peachy's done with regard to a lot of the weathering. Now I've done it slightly differently. I've used MIG weathering powders rather than Games Workshop paints. But using the propaganda posters, I've certainly gone and copied uh, or applied uh, some of the effects that Peachy's done with that. So all I did was Google a load of Warhammer propaganda posters, shrink them down on a Word document, then cut them out and glue them on to these terrain pieces. And I think they make for a really cool effect. I've got some close-ups coming up in these photos. So this is one half of the building. This is the Kill Team core set plus the uh, Basilicanum kit, which has the one with the big statues. Now I have got a painting guide on those statues, and I'll leave links for all of that in the description. And you can see one of those little propaganda posters on that little piece uh, there to the left, next to the weathered uh, air conditioning vent unit, whatever that bit of technology is. So just back in the light box then, just from the rear side of this, all the details are painted on the inside, all weathered, all the dials are painted, all the cables are painted. You know, just taking it to that next level so that when you do do battle reports um, with your terrain that's going to be on camera, you really don't want your, your, your terrain to look you know, garbage because it's going to show up on camera. Your armies are going to look great, but your, your terrain's not going to look so good. So you can see in that back right hand corner, all of the, all the level of effort and detail I've gone into on that because that will just show up on my battle reports. So as I said, big advocate of spending time on your terrain to make it look as good as you're willing to spend as much time on it as possible. Now the ground cover for this, exactly the same method as I used for that little fire base that I made, and I'm going to be applying this to multiple tiles. And as if by magic, the uh, the leftovers of those two terrain kits that I've combined to make the one on the left, I've made the second half of this building on the right. Again, adding some barrels and bits of leftover ammo crates and so on, just to make it that little bit uh, cooler. And I also found an old piece of uh, resin terrain that Games Workshop made some standalone resin terrain pieces like uh, scatter terrain. And this one was a, a crashed motorbike in some in some ruins. So I've glued that on the front just to add a little bit of character to it. And I can run these two pieces of terrain completely separately or I can run them as like a, a centerpiece on the board or run them in kill team as sort of the main pieces of terrain for a kill team game. So lots of options the way that, you know, making these on 12 by 12 uh, pieces of MDF means they are entirely modular and you can face them in any direction you like, use them separately or combine them to make a, uh, a larger piece of terrain. And you can see it's pretty large. My light box is, is pretty big. Uh, and when you put those two together, you just, you know, you can't crop out the sides of the light box. So this is that second piece on its own. And you can see that sort of crashed piece of bike on the front. That was a piece of terrain that was released by Games Workshop a long time ago. They don't make them anymore. But as I was sort of rummaging through all my terrain kits and found those uh, um, pieces of barricade and so on, I thought, you know what, I'll uh, blend them into this board. And with that sculptor mode and all the other techniques that I mentioned earlier with the, uh, the tile grout and real dirt, it blends in perfectly into that without looking like it's just a stuck on piece of, uh, piece of uh, you know, rubble that's just, that happens to be at the front of the board. Which some pieces of terrain can look like, they can look a bit, uh, you know, a bit artificial. So with all that blending of the, uh, of the ground cover in place, um, this is the, uh, the end result and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it to be honest. And the painting of, that, uh, of those baseboards is really simple. All I've done is, is painted them black and then dry brush white. There is nothing more to it than that. Um, it's, it's as simple as, as you want it to be. If you want it to be different colours, then obviously you apply different colours. And in fact, the way that Luke teaches people to do this is you don't even have to paint it at all if you don't want to. Because it is made from real dirt, uh, just mixed with that tile grout powder to make it set really hard, um, you can just leave it as natural as you like, and that will be the dirt colour itself. And uh, I use brown tile grout, which matches, matches the dirt, but you can use red tile grout and white tile grout, and you'll get different effects based on all of that. And it might look dark at the start, but once you've uh, wetted it down and glued it all together, it ends up with that stunning effect, and I'm really happy with it. So there we go then guys, that is three sections of terrain that I've done in Terrain Tober. I'm not going to do that hashtag again, that's twice in two videos I've done that and I'm not doing it anymore. Now they're really, really simple to do, uh, you know, painting the, the terrain is down to you, but that, that ground cover is what really makes it for me and people like Luke's APS that make that possible by applying some sheer genius with their building knowledge to make things like that happen so that, you know, simpletons like myself can make it look pretty good by my own standards. 
Now I've got several other pieces of terrain that are going to go on. I've got lots of uh, lots more of these 12 by 12 boards that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be putting my sector mechanica stuff on there, but I'm trying to be really careful about how I apply that so that I can make it uh, as interchangeable as possible. So that walkways will connect to other sections because it's all three dimensional, it's all sort of quite high up. So I want to make sure that they can all interact no matter what angles that I place those at. I've also got a few more of the old school Sector Imperialis uh, terrain kits. Uh, in fact, I shall show you the next one that's on the go right here. So you can see here, I'm giving this one a new lease of life as well. Basically, this started off just as this corner section, uh, and that was it. And it was painted really badly. It was just black and dry brushed with grey. Um, but I'm giving this a new lease of life. So this has had all the ground cover applied. Uh, it's got some ammo crates. It's had some new detail in the corner. Uh, there's a little escape tunnel down here. But yeah, so I'm, I'm just repainting that one at the moment. And again, that will fit in with the rest of the terrain. And finally, I have another one on the go, which is this one here. Um, using the same piece of uh, the old uh, uh, barricade stuff. Some of the uh, uh, those resin barricades that were about that I told you about earlier. That's the other ones of those. Some ammo crates buried in here as well. Um, so yeah, this again started life just as that L-shaped piece, uh, which was just sort of free-floating and again painted very basically before. But putting those two kits together um, now makes a nice U-shape um, or any other combination you want to do. And I've got a whole bunch more of those baseboards. And as I said, I'm going to be reinvigorating some of my old terrain kits. They do look really cool when it comes to battle reports and just generally playing games with my friends. But that's going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the terrain table pieces that I've done so far. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section if you are big on terrain as much as I am uh, and any sort of tips and tricks that you might have that you want to share with this channel. We much appreciated. I'm all into knowledge sharing as best as possible. Um, but obviously a big shout out to people like Luke's APS who make this stuff uh, happen and uh, allow people like me to make my terrain look a lot better. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I shall catch you guys on the next video.